Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and today I'm telling you everything you need to know about Workhorse by showing you an internal guide of the company. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like on this video, comment down below your thoughts on Workhorse, and let's get into it. First off, I want to address people who are spending their life savings on this Workhorse stock. Please stop it. If you are willing to gamble your savings or your emergency fund on this stock, then investing is not for you. At this time, you might be better suited for a casino, not the stock market. Secondly, if you are just investing in Workhorse because of the WKHS United States Postal Service contract, it will save you a lot of time, money, headache, and worry if you just invest immediately when the contract winner is announced. Subscribe to a financial paper or journal that is on high alert for this contract winner. This way, you have no risk of losing money Money, and you can still catch the stock increasing before it pulls back if you want to trade it. It will also save you from a big loss if Workhorse does not get the USPS contract. Remember, losing money and missing an opportunity to get money are very different. I would rather miss a million dollar opportunity than lose a million dollars and be in debt. Thirdly, keep in mind that Workhorse is a startup company competing against automotive giants and that Workhorse's financials are a mess at best. I understand startups will take on short-term debt to get long-term gains, but in a time of uncertainty such as this, we are in uncharted waters and anything could happen. Any company can go under, even Workhorse. Lastly, invest intelligently and take on the least amount of risk that offers the greatest amount of reward. No one can predict the stock market. If you study mass psychology and become an investor, Investor, you might be better off than someone like myself who has studied finance, investing, and business. That concludes my intro rant. Let's start the video. I want to mention that this slideshow is on Workhorse's website and that I did not make this slideshow. All credit goes to Workhorse. I will link this slideshow in the description of the video down below. This is for educational purposes only. I will not monetize this video. All rights are reserved to the respected owners and or creators. The only thing I am adding is commentary and I drew over some of the slides to highlight some key points because if I didn't, I could easily make a 30 minute video explaining everything and that's way too long. I will mostly just read through the main points so I don't take up too much time talking so you can develop your own thoughts and opinions. Feel free to rewatch this video and pause when needed. Let's get it. If you don't know what Workhorse is, Workhorse is an electric vehicle manufacturer who is in the running to obtain a $6 billion contract with the United States Postal Service. Workhorse's ticker symbol is WKHS. Workhorse is also developing drone technology to help deliver packages to save money on fuel. Workhorse's last mile delivery vehicles are fully electric and ISO certified. Their C series was developed alongside UPS to meet their stringent requirements. Basically, the ISO certification tells us that their vehicles meet the regular quality standards. Workhorse's Horsefly drones are proprietary unmanned aerial systems designed for package delivery markets such as UPS and FedEx. Workhorse has partnered with Duke Energy to provide infrastructure support for depot-wide electrification and financing for battery vehicles. Duke Energy is a pretty good stock and it has a decent dividend, so if you are a dividend investor, I would highly suggest that you check out Duke Energy. Anyway, let's get back into the video. Workhorse is also the only US-based electric OEM selected company to develop the United States Postal Service next generation delivery vehicle, and it has already completed its prototype testing. We are currently waiting on those results. From the articles that I have read, the winner of the USPS contract will be announced anytime from now until the end of the year. Workhorse has comparable acquisition costs to ICE diesel vehicles, which enables positive return on investment three years without incentives. Basically, Workhorse is going to start generating a lot of revenue here within the next couple of years, not to mention that they have a lot of investment and partnerships with big blue chip stock customers, such as UPS, DHL, FedEx, Ryder, WB Mason, and Alpha Banking Incorporated. Workhorse has innovative proprietary technologies such as batteries, powertrains, drivetrains, chassis, software, telematics, communication systems, and they are leveraged across their entire vehicle portfolio with seven granted patents and four currently pending. This is all really good in the short terms. We have blue chip stocks, we have strong partners, but what are their projected earnings in the future? Let's take a look at their upcoming projects. This slide on their website is slightly outdated. The near-term growth opportunity opportunities for Workhorse is definitely the USPS contract. It represents a $6.3 billion revenue stream, and they have to produce over 180,000 vehicles, which is going to be very amazing and definitely test the metal of Workhorse's craftsmanship, design, and their proprietary technology. Not to mention their interest and partnership in Lordstown Motors Corporation for the development of an all-new fully electric pickup truck. 
we have to look at those projected contracts in conjunction with the contracts that are currently being fulfilled right now, such as with the UPS, specifically their C-Series truck, and it's purposely built to be the safest and most efficient last mile delivery system available. This C-Series truck has a 100 mile fully electric range with optimal horse fly drone, and we haven't even taken into consideration Workhorse's Metron Telematics communication system, which is cloud-based, and it provides clients access to real-time data Data to monitor and measure performance, it gives fleet operators the ultimate efficiency management system. This technology allows drivers to take the ultimate energy saving route so they can reach that 100 miles with no wasted energy or juice from the battery. Lately, I have been underwhelmed by Horsefly's performance, specifically their drone technology in the original tests that they were supposed to go through, and they failed all of the tests, so I really don't want to talk about the Horsefly drone much. But I know Workhorse will continue to try to innovate with their drone technology. Just look at the Gen 1 E-Series compared to Workhorse's C100. Workhorse is so innovative and so technologically advanced now that the C100 beats their old vehicle in literally every category, so that is something to strive for and to continue on, and I think they're going to apply those same methodologies to their drones. Workhorse also clearly knows who their target market is, and they estimate that it's approximately an $8 billion industry, which is absolutely phenomenal, and they know exactly what and who they're targeting. Workhorse seems to really interested in retail stores such as DHL, UPS, FedEx, and Walmart. Not to mention that their vehicle sizes, they have two different sizes. So if you want a big vehicle or a small vehicle, they already got you covered. Not to mention that they are continuing to make vehicles to add to their already impressive vehicle portfolio list. This is my favorite slide in the presentation. You can read the bulleted list over to the left, but I want to draw your attention over to the graph on the right. On the X axis, we have the number of years, and on the Y axis, it tells us the total cost of ownership in thousands of dollars. This graph clearly and directly compares a gas vehicle to an electric vehicle, and after the first three years, the electric vehicle is way easier to maintain and to charge, saving you an average of $170,000 in 20 years. That is absolutely amazing. This also reduces the operating cost from around $1 to approximately about $0.36 cents per mile. If you think that Tesla is the future, let's compare it to Workhorse. Now, both these cars are electric vehicle manufacturers, but they have more of an indirect competition relationship because they are not trying to sell to the same target market per se. But who knows, maybe in the future, Tesla will be a direct competitor to Workhorse. You never know, Tesla is very innovative and Elon Musk is an absolute madman, so I'm going to give Tesla a check X. Now, if we go over to Ford, they are a direct competitor to Workhorse, not to mention that this could turn into a rivalry because Ford supports Oshkosh Corporation, and Oshkosh Corporation is Workhorse's number one competitor competition for the United States Postal Service contract, and I believe Oshkosh Corporation has more potential to actually landing the contract. Workhorse might be awarded only a percentage of the total contract. But even if Workhorse is only awarded a portion of the United States Postal Service contract, which I think that's what's going to happen, it is absolutely phenomenal for an electric vehicle startup company who IPO'd in 2015 to compete with motor vehicle giants such as Ford Motor Company and Oshkosh Corporation. All of the other companies mentioned here besides Tesla and Ford are direct competitors to Workhorse, but they're not real competition. And what I mean by that is just look at the chart. They don't compete with Workhorse really well in any of these categories besides the commercial electric vehicle portfolio, which means the number of electric vehicles they have to offer, and the zero emissions. And of course they're zero emissions because they're an electronic car. Workhorse is displaying their dominance here compared to these other vehicle manufacturers. Remember, Workhorse's technology is proprietary. No one else has it. They have seven patents, and four more are on the way, which is just going to add to Workhorse's arsenal. I want to highlight the environmental impact section because these electric vehicles that have zero emissions are really going to help out the environment, and we can even see legislation being passed right now in certain states, specifically California, where these cars are going to come in real handy. If you look over to the left of your screen, you can see Workhorse's relationship with UPS, and I wanted to bring this up because some people are saying that Workhorse is not going to get the United States Postal Service contract because no one wants to do business with Workhorse. And I was like, um, excuse me, UPS has been doing business with Workhorse almost since 2012. So I don't think that's a good reason or good evidence saying that they're not going to get the United States Postal Service contract because no one really wants to do business with them. I just think that is plain false. Here are some of the partners and suppliers to Workhorse. Duke Energy, Arendelle, Moog, Prefix, Ryder, TPI. I mean, you can't tell me that that's good evidence when clearly they are wrong. And this is coming from the guy 
guy that doesn't even think that Workhorse is going to get the full United States Postal Service contract. I'm trying to be run of the mill here, but it just gets me. Another objection that I hear a lot from people, and this one's more understandable, but it doesn't really make too much sense, is that Workhorse doesn't have the manufacturing capacity to produce 180,000 plus vehicles for the United States Postal Service. And I see this point, but they do because they don't need the 180,000 vehicles immediately. They are going to cycle out the old Grumman vehicles for these new vehicles. And Workhorse has already produced over 60 plus thousand chassis a year. So they are already on a good track, not to mention their plant in Indiana is already cranking out vehicles like crazy. So I don't think that is a great excuse, even though Ford and Oshkosh Corporation could definitely do it much better and more efficiently. I don't think alone that that's enough evidence to disprove Workhorse's ability to get the contract. Another comment about Workhorse that I hear on YouTube is that Workhorse is stable and fiscally responsible, but this is easily disproven by the fact that if you looked at their financial statements or earnings chart, the numbers would disagree with you. Then a follow-up comment is that Workhorse is getting money from royalties because Lordstown Motors is accessing Workhorse's technology and paying a premium for them. But that is for the future. It's not like Lordstown Motors is cranking out thousands of cars right now and paying Workhorse for it. Because Lordstown is in debt too for similar reasons as Workhorse. They are both startup electric vehicle companies. Now, do I think that Workhorse is a great company? Absolutely, I think Workhorse is a great company, whether or not they win the United States Postal Service contract. Same with Lordstown Motors. I think they are a very promising startup electric vehicle company. Over in this last slide for Workhorse, I want to show you the experience and knowledge and expertise of their leadership. We have people from Cisco, Procter & Gamble, GE Aviation senior level executives with more than 20 years of business experience in relation to automotive advertising and technology. Workhorse's chief operating officer previously held senior management position at Hughes Aircraft and Texas Instruments and also was a director of fleet technology at Cisco. Workhorse's chief financial officer has more than 16 years as a CFO. Their director of research and development worked at Procter & Gamble for 35 years where he was the first technology associated director for power control and information systems. The director of engineering has combined experience in all-wheel drivetrain, powertrain, integration, engine development, and electronic control simulation and hydraulic hybrid developments and lastly their plant manager has experience in a variety of positions including materials production engineering quality industrial engineering and program management this is a stacked team if you want to know if a company's going to do well look at the leadership thank you all so much for watching and remember i did not touch on all the information on every slide so please go back and read them at your own discretion if you want more information remember i did not make these slides this was for educational purposes only and i will not monetize this video. That's all I have for you guys today. I'll see you in the next YT video.